Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 268 for Monday, August 24th, 2020. Folks, and welcome back or welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here back in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here for the first time from Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. Napomo, we've we've both done a little traveling. It's weird for me to say back in Durham, New Hampshire. I actually, <laughs> I, was, I was on airplanes this past week, man, which was very weird and frightening and all of those things, but it was... It was mandatory. Well, as close to mandatory as anything can get, bringing my son to, uh, to Congratulations school. Congratulations on that. Your, your Thanks. son is awesome, and he's going to do great in college. I think he is. I, I think he's in a good place for him. He went out to Reed's, Reed College in Portland. So, um, yeah, I think, I, think he's, I think he's in good shape out there. I mean, you know, the world's weird right now, so we have no idea. But, um, but yeah, it seems all right. It was, uh, it was interesting traveling. Uh, you know, we wore, a, I wore a mask yesterday. So yeah, I, I am an empty nester as of, well, I mean, we've been empty nesters since we dropped them off Tuesday, but, uh, but we really haven't been home. I've been home for maybe 18 hours uh, as of the time we're recording this show. So um, I, I don't really know what it's like to be an empty nester yet. Um, but, uh, but we wore masks on, well, from the time we got to the airport till the time we got in our car at the other airport. Uh, for maybe seven hours, I would say it's maybe seven and a half hours yesterday. I wore, I wore two masks on the plane. It worked out great. I have a bunch of these KN95 masks, uh, that are relatively easy to get now here in the States that protect in two directions if you're wearing them correctly. Um, but they do loop over the ears and that felt like, like, on our flight out, I realized, oh, I don't really, you know, that's that's a lot of pressure on the ears for that many hours because the KN95s, you have pretty tight um, mm -hmm. in order for them to do their job. And uh, and so I have this cloth mask that ties around the back of my neck. It's one of the very first masks I got when all of this started. And it's not a very good mask from that standpoint, but it does have the ability to tie around the back of my neck. And so I actually wore both and then when I wanted a break on my ears, I just unlooped the um, the KN95, which was underneath the cloth mask, and that kind of helped it stay on and uh, made the the flight was fine. I just watched a couple of movies on my iPad. You know, it's all good. So it's got to be nerve wracking to do that for the first time. I Dude, can imagine. I I am yeah. eagerly uh, eagerly anticipating, anxious about my um, my rapid test that I have scheduled for tomorrow morning, um, just to make sure the flights didn't infect me. And really I'm not so much worried about the actual flight planes are very well and have always been very well, um, you know, filtered with in terms of air and, and the airline we were on Alaska has, you know, middle seats empty. And I got lucky on this flight with, uh, yesterday with no one was in even the seat across the aisle from me, which is even better. Cool. Yep. Um, but you know, I mean, all those high touch surfaces that you get, dealing with an airport and dealing with, you know, people and checking in and all that stuff. I mean, they, they all do a great job. They, they all do as much as I could imagine they could possibly do, but still you're in a place with lots of people and, and the airport doesn't quite have the filtration that a plane does. So, you know, there is that concern that, that somewhere along the line, we picked something up. Um, it's weird today, Paul. I, it's the first day in like seven days where I haven't been obsessively using hand sanitizer. So <laughs> uh, it's good to be home, <laughs> there you go. but I do have a gig Wednesday night. So that's why I had scheduled this test for tomorrow morning. But, um, you know, also just for my own, uh, sort of so you're, sanity. You're kind of back in the game. Like gigs are being offered gigs, are you know, opportunities are coming around. Yeah. We're saying no to more things than we're saying yes to, uh, for sure. You know, it's an evaluation. We haven't taken any real, you know, indoor things or anything like that. Um, are, and even you offered indoor things. There are. Yeah, there I mean, there are clubs that are doing indoor things. Um uh, it just doesn't it seems like more of I you know, ask me how I feel about that in February because the, the outdoor opportunities for us are going to dry up within a month. 
right? Right. You know, it, here in New England, that's just how that works with temperature wise, unless somebody figures out, you know, how to, I guess you could use a lot of outdoor heaters and maybe extend that to the, to Halloween, but that's it, you know? Um, so, you know, the only indoor gigs I've done have been the ones at, um, at Seacoast Rep, the Hedwig gigs. And those were, you know, very, very, we were able to be very distant from the audience. It's a huge room. It's well ventilated. You know, they, they had the ventilation replaced a couple of years ago, which turned out to be a really good thing. Um, and obviously everybody was tested, but that's happening. Like for me, that is, th that, that is a mandatory thing for, for the, um, for gigs now is that everybody that I'm on stage with, and if there's a crew, everybody in the crew, but, uh, is tested and, you know, and all of that. It's not a hundred percent, but it certainly keeps every, everything as up to date as we could possibly be. And then it's testing and the awkward, what I call the awkwardly transparent conversation, right? The, how, what have you been doing since you got tested? And, and yeah. those conversations have yielded results that have wound up having, um, us decline gigs simply because of that. So we got offered a gig that yeah. I thought I might be able to put together. So sure. it's, it's an outdoor drive-in, drive-in car concert gig, right? Yeah. Okay. And I want to talk for a few minutes about the the conversation that the band had, because it was interesting and That's, revealing. I think it's, yep. it'll be useful to everybody, right? Yeah, let's do it. So I knew I couldn't just go to the guys and say, Hey, we got a gig. So yeah. I had to kind of, you know, I had to kind of frame the packaging given, given previous conversations where a couple of guys are truly like, we're done until, you know, it's a hundred percent healthy. Sure. Which it will never and be. I, but Right. And I actually, <laughs> you know, a, a month ago when we had a, a conversation, I was kind of like assuming that that's what it's going to be. Right? right. And over the past month, you know, I've just been thinking a lot about new normals and, you know, what if this is the way it is for three years? Do you right. want to not play for three years? Right. And, you know, and what would be different over the next three years than right now in terms of what you would require for safety? That, that, that's, so, that's the right, I, to, that's how, I don't want to say it's the right way, that it's the only right way, <laughs> but that is how I approached this too, was what do I, very clear about that. what do I need to answer for a future conversation? Cause I've said no to everything. I've, you know, at the point, at the point in time where I came up with that, it was like, I've, I'm saying no to everything. What's it going to take for me to say yes in the future? Well, and and yeah. hold on to that because that's actually the biggest point of that. So yeah. I bring it to the guys and, and the, here's some of the types of comments I got. One guy was like, it's a, it, they sit in their cars, you know, what kind of energy will that create? How, how will we go over with that? And, and then I was asking, do you think, are they allowed to dance right next to their cars? You know, would be one of the questions that one of the guys sure. asked. The concern was that, you know, would we go over well if with just a bunch of people in, in their cars and, you know, fair one guy question. Was, yeah. Fair enough. Question. I mean, yep. you, it, like it's, it's worth being cognizant of the impact to your brand. Well, that, and hold on to that one because we got to okay. talk about that as well. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So the next thing, um, someone said, you know, I really thought that I envisioned this massive party that when the world opens up again, that we would be, you know, leading this giant celebration. And that would be our, our big comeback. Huh. It's not going to work uh, out that way. <laughs> well, I mean, in, so again, let's put that in the, in the, you know, concern about brand or perception sure. about how these things go. Yep. One guy asked a lot of questions and actually I asked the question. So first of all, tell me about security. Tell me about, you know, what you, what you envision for the band security. Are there, is there PD that will be keeping people in their cars? Cause they originally said it was a drive-in concert. Yep. Uh, or will people be able to, how are you handling bathrooms? How are you handling um, concessions? Yeah. And so this was a, uh, a town park and rec. And so they're not half asking this, right? You know, no. they're, they're, they don't, they don't want to be accountable for anyone getting sick and they don't want to hurt anybody. And so they've actually, they, they were pretty far down the line with, with knowing what they wanted to do that's good. by the time they brought it to us. That's a yes, good, so that's a really good litmus test right there is how much have, have the people who are offering you the opportunity to play thought yeah. about the, and the things, gig offer yeah. was for October 2nd. So we're okay. talking, you know, yeah. quite a ways away. So yes, PD would be involved. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, they felt that they could put security backstage. Uh, yes. Um, nobody would be closer in a car more than 20 feet away. People would be expected to stay in their cars. Standard um, social distancing rules for lines at the bathroom and what they would be doing to clean the bathroom. 
the uh, clubhouse where they sell has been open for concessions anyway. So standard rules for them. Yep. You, know, you can order from your car and pick up. So they had, they had a pretty decent plan. They had a plan. Yeah. Um, and when I brought it back and, and so then back to the band. So one of the horns in the band is like, you know, we're going to get a lot of hate from this because a musicians who like my p- position had been like, you know, yeah. don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution. Um, horn players are projecting stuff. And so this one guy, very smart guy in my band, he was like, you know, there are um, bell covers for horns. Uh, and so, you know, these things, and he belongs to a few horn uh, message boards sure. where they're talking about these things because horn players want to play also. So, you know, being able to put things over. One of my sax players said, well, you know, a lot of air comes out of the, out of the, 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 whatever the buttons are called on a saxophone. Oh yeah. Um, not, not out of the bell, but air, right. it, you know, comes out of different parts of the saxophone. Sure. And then the next guy said, well, but that, that's not being projected and that's going to fall to the ground pretty quickly. And so we had kind of had this fairly sure. intellectual conversation about all this stuff. So I was like, you know, uh, I said, guys, we got to figure this out. You know, should I ask for a stage where we can get basically everybody that blows air in a straight line across the stage facing, facing out. And that includes um, your singers, of course. Because it, it includes everybody. Yeah, so basically, right. Russ would be the only one back there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, horns, are. would you be acceptable if we put, you know, the brass in a, in a line behind? If I can't get a stage that wide, um, can we put plexiglass up and the right. brass will blow into plexiglass? Yeah. And then there were a bunch of questions like, well, that's going to create reflections and that's going to affect sound. And, you know, so it really drilled down into safety issues, qualitative issues, brand issues, um, you know, and then finally it was interesting. I was thinking about you in my conversation where you found that guy who's selling tests. Right. And I yeah. said, well, let me ask you guys a question. If I, it, let's set aside all the other stuff, right. You know, we all have different perceptions of the brand I- impact, you know, and, and we're not all going to be on the same page about that one. And I'm asking you, and it, this would have been a decently paying gig, right? Sure. I'm like, if this is what normal looks like, I want you guys to flip this around. Instead of giving me your laundry list of of what you need, let's figure out how to get to yes together. What does yes look like for all of you? And so Smart. I said, well, you know what? Let me ask you a question. What if, what if we, you know, my buddy Dave found this guy who does rapid tests. What about testing? You know, how will you feel? And everybody's like, oh, that would, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I would do that. That's got to be part of the equation. And then actually the conversation went to, I'm actually not as concerned about the guys in the band and being on stage. I actually, you know, trust you know, these conversations. We all care about each other. You know, we would be honest if we've been exposing each other. And but I got to say, is I don't, you don't know. No, I wouldn't. Like, that's scary to me. I would. That, and you, and that's fine. If you had that opinion, that'd be great. I'm only yep. sharing yeah. that in my band, there was kind of a consensus where guys were holding their hands up that they would get a test. They would quarantine for two days before a gig, sure. you know, to get the test results two days before yeah, yeah, and then yeah. quarantine for two days. So we all of a sudden knocked out a lot of it. Yeah. That the stage is not the problem. Right. right. Oh, that you have to like, yeah, right. Well, that's like to my rules, right. Or to my personal rules. Like I need to feel safe on stage and I need to know that people in the crowd who want to be safe can feel safe. So yeah, with testing, you can knock out the, the stage from being a problem. Usually as long and, as the logistics yeah, exactly. of the gig, keep other people from infecting the stage. Yeah. But the, the, the progress that was made, even though we ended up not taking the gig, yeah, the progress that was made was that we went from, we're done for, you know, a year or two years or until it's perfectly safe to a more constructive, like what, what would okay look like? Yep. Let's construct that list together. The horn started, you know, going back and forth about bell covers and, you know, started solving their own problems about what that would look like together. And then, you know, I can kind of lead us through the brand discussions and, you know, I kind of seeded that for future discussions, which is like, this might be the only type of gig you have for quite a while. All right. Would you, you know, would you rather do something, even if people in cars blinking their lights and honking their horns at us, would you rather do that and have an opportunity to perform uh, and get paid um, or do nothing? Right. So yeah, my, I felt my role as leader, as I start the last couple of conversations were more about, you know, it's off the table. And like any good negotiator, like what would it take to get it on the table? Right. And then what would it take? What would it get you? To, what would it get you to feel good about it and buy into it? And so 
the the conversation advanced. I wouldn't say I have the the golden list now, like you have your golden list. I, I wouldn't say that I have a golden list that 10 guys are all aligned, but we're now talking in, in terms of what's, what does what yes possible. look like? Yeah. What is yes? Exactly. No, that's so, the, key. that's the key. And I, I mean, it, the easiest band for me to have this conversation with, well, and it, both the, the Hedwig crew and monkey fist were really easy. I, I kind of came up with my rules. The monkey fist guys, quite frankly, just hadn't stopped to think about it yet. But as soon as I, I did, they were like, Oh, let's, that's great. Let's do that. So it was zero friction. And I was honestly, wasn't sure when I brought it to him, like, how do you guys feel about getting tested? Like, I thought this might be a deal killer. And, and they were, they, it was completely the opposite. They were laid leaned right in. They're like, yeah, this sounds like a great idea. And the, the Hedwig cast was the same way. Like they were all, in fact, already there. I just kind of came in and said, here's, here's what my, here's my list of demands. And they were like, right. Yeah. Ours is the same list. I'm like, great. Then we're in good shape. Um, other bands though, have been very different conversations, kind of like what you're going through here, where everybody has their own view on what they feel is safe and also what they're willing to do to, uh, to help to, uh, to meet their bandmates needs as well. Right. Cause everybody has different comfort levels. Like you said, there's some guys in, in your band that are like, Oh, I would trust you guys. We, I had that with one of my bands where it was like, we don't need to get tested. I trust you guys. Like you're all being safe. It's like, yeah, but whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't know that. Like, like, mm. you know, my definition of safe is not necessarily the same as yours. And you don't want to find out after the fact that mine was far less than yours, right? You, you know, it better to just wipe that clean and just get everybody tested. And well, and everybody thinks they're being safe. Everybody, <laughs> well, that's right. That's the thing is we all do. We all think we're being safe. And it's way easier to have that conversation about two days versus 14 days and uh, and and all of that. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Um, and I'm glad to hear you're having that conversation. That's good because otherwise you're right. It could be years before you're willing to play. If the, if the metric is it therefore must like there, there, but there must be no more COVID ever. Right. And it's yeah. like, yeah, well, that would be great. Don't get me wrong. I would love that, but that's not necessarily how we're going on this. So that's good, man. I'm glad. Hopefully, yep. uh, hopefully another opportunity comes up that, um, that you'll be able to find a way to say yes to. That would be good. I sure hope so. Yeah, man. Yep. Hey, um, we, I, and Oh, you mentioned, um, I did. So testing around here is, is pretty easy and it's getting better in terms of turnaround time for results. Um, but you're right. Uh, Paul, you alluded to me finding, uh, another way around because I don't like being held hostage by, you know, 10 day turnaround on test results. Um, uh, and so I did, I found, uh, a place where I was able to order some at home tests, uh, that are rapid tests. And, um, I'll put a link in the show notes if anybody else wants to be crazy like me, they are FDA approved, but that's all I'll say about them. You have to do your own research and make your own mm -hmm. decisions, but I've made my own decisions about them and I'm happy to, to share the link. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it opens up the door. If we can get to a point where, you know, th then there's those companies out there that, that are working on the saliva tests that are even more rapid. Like they're just instant and cheap too. like, you know, they say retail price of like a dollar a test that changes a lot of things. And cause oh, then you can test the crowd as they walk in. Right. And that now becomes a really interesting um, For sure. thing, you know, so, so maybe that's our eventual future. And that's kind of how I got to that point for me. It was like, okay, well, if we can do like vaccine, hmm, we don't know if one doesn't exist yet that, that has been proven. So we don't have that, but we do have tests. So how can we scale testing that to me, that's just how I think about things. But Hey, um, I wanted to take a minute, you know, uh, well, you've, what are you doing in your band? This is what we want to know because we've shared what we're doing here. We each have, you know, different bands and therefore different experiences. Um, we'd love to hear what you're doing. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com would be the, uh, the place to send that in feedback at giggabpodcast.com because we'd love to hear about it. And, and then we can share on the show and, you know, as we're all sort of figuring this out, we can figure it out together because, you know, two minds are better than one and thousands of minds are better than two. So please feedback at giggabpodcast.com. 
We got a review in Paul, which we nice. also like. Yeah. I, we, I mean, it, you know, these things really do help us, but if you go to giggabpodcast.com slash reviews, you can leave us a review too. But, uh, Elisa DiNapoli from the United Kingdom left a review last week saying wonderful podcast, entertaining and full of useful tips and tricks for the working musician. I can really recommend listening to this show. It's always varied, inspiring to the point and never, ever boring. Well, we endeavor to keep all of that up, especially the last bit. So thank you, Elisa or Elisa. Thank you, Elisa. I don't know how to, yep. Yeah, I might, I might mispronounce your name, but it is with the best intention. Uh, so yeah, thanks for your, uh, for your reviews. Y you know, something came up and I think it was again, like as with many things sort of catalyzed by a Facebook discussion I saw somewhere where, uh, people were talking about, well, you know, how do you deal with it when your bandmates, uh, have a, it, let's say constructive criticism about something you're playing, how you're playing it, uh, what you're doing at a certain part in a song, like that sort of thing. And there is a phrase that is used in the theater world that I have been working very hard to adopt in my non-theater, you know, rock and roll world. And for whatever reason, it I've found it way easier to to employ this in the theater world than it was than it is in the rock and roll world. P perhaps because in the theater world, there's a director, and uh, that person is. Uh, you know, seeing the overall vision and everybody sort of buys into the fact that that person's seeing the overall vision. It doesn't mean that you can't bring up your ideas. It just means that there's a time and a place. And when that person's issuing like, Hey, here's this and this, and it's called notes, right? You finish a run of a, a, a rehearsal of a performance or something and, and notes are delivered. And the phrase is take the note. Uh, and what that means is in that moment uh, where the director is there, sort of reading through his or her list of all of the various things that, you know, that they noticed during that performance. And it's like, okay, you know, Timmy, when, when you do this, make sure you hit your mark here so that you in the right place. And Dave, you know, watch the, the tempo on, on this part of the tune, you've got dancers there, or you're playing something that's too busy in that part of the tune. You've got dancers there, you know, make sure that you're driving them and, and, you know, as the primary thing. And the, like I said, the advice is take the note. There, that is not the time for a conversation constructive as it may be about it. It's not the time to make an excuse. It's not the time to even apologize. It's simply a time to say thank you and take the note. And that is a really helpful thing. It's a very productive thing. And I've tried it. And this isn't, this isn't necessarily new for me. Uh, maybe the last year or two, I've really tried to apply this in my, you know, rock and roll world where it's like, you know, if somebody has something to say in one of those moments, like, you know, Hey man, um, you know, when you count that tune off, make sure you, you know, you do it this way or whatever. Thank you. And <laughs> then later, if, you know, after I've processed what they've said, if I think that what they've in the moment, you never, it's always no, right. You, and you, I never like it. When somebody corrects me, right? Because that's, I, I, I would say it's human, human nature. nature. It's Dave yeah. nature for sure, right? I do not like <laughs> being corrected. But in the moment, I just say thank you. And then I let it process and, and you know, think about it and try and get a little bit of objectivity or at least some temporal distance between when they said the thing and when I'm actually thinking about what they said and, and evaluating it on its merits. And many times it's like, oh, actually, you know what? They're, they're probably right. Or it doesn't matter all that much. Like if this makes them feel more comfortable on stage, you know what? It's fine. Uh, and then there's some times where it's like, ah, you know, I, I do want to have that conversation. And then you carve out time for the conversation. So it doesn't become a reactionary thing. It doesn't become yeah. a right. You know, and it like I say this, I still fail at it all the time. I used to fail at it in the theater world too. Until I realized, ah, right. Take some, I think somebody said to me, I think I was in the, in the, in one of those moments where I was conversing and, and somebody just turned to me and they're like, dude, take the note. And I was like, right. I've seen this. Happen. So I, I would offer you two things about this. <laughs> one is I, I don't, you know, I've never been in a pit band. I sure. don't know, but, but you know how we had, 
many, many episodes of conversations about what makes a pro and what doesn't make a pro, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And I would say, I would say, I'm imagining in the theater world, the director is, that's the chain of command and it, it, it is. actually is his call. You Correct. may have an opinion about it, but, and you know, the relative value of you arguing your point with the guy who makes the call and how, and how you would argue your point, I guess you would play into this, but ultimately it's not your you know, call. That, <laughs> it's not your call in that situation, in, in that a band situation, with a democracy, yes. it, it's a different vibe, right? But here's the other thing. Do you remember the conversation we had about your, your friend who, um, subbed for Van Halen before Sammy got the gig? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, dude. Yeah. Do you remember what he said about, about teleprompters and getting the words right? Yeah, that's right. We're talking about Gary Sharon here. And, and he said that he, um, you know, we were talking about teleprompters and this was just some separate conversation or whatever at a gig that I was playing, he was watching and, and we were talking about teleprompters. He's like, yeah, I always used them because something might distract you in the moment. And the line that you're about to screw up might be, you know, that well, person I'm way over there. It might be their favorite lyric and the reason they came to the show. And he's like, so I don't want to miss it just because I saw, you know, some woman remove her top in the front row. There you go. So, you, you so mean, my you know, point is, yeah. you know, the differences between bands that are committed and bands that are just get, getting together for fun. If you listen to your performances and keep refining and keep refining all with the idea that what we do is we're selling a moment, right? That, you know, the way Sharon said it was, you know, that might be that person's lyric, but whatever it is, it might be the moment two people meet at your gig. It might be someone's favorite song. You know, there's a lot of things. What we do with live performance is we're trying to get moments perfect. So they can be perfect moments for people to come and consume what we do. I'm getting a little ex existential here, but. No, it's, no, there's something to that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the definition of perfect is, is sort of the, the, the the nebulous thing here but you're right we're trying to create these perfect moments and your band's perfect moment might be very different from my band's perfect moment or you know th you, that other person's band's perfect moment but that is what we're out there trying to do yeah for sure so i i really like that and i know i i go through phases where i will listen I, we had this conversation also like sometimes you listen to a gig back on your drive home when it's a long drive oh never not anymore that's a that's a terrible mistake that i've made in the past <laughs> paul and I've, I've, I've atoned for this <laughs> i i wait several days at least now because unless i thought the gig was awful and I want to die. If I thought the gig was awful, I will listen to it right away. You know, like if I'm like, oh, I really screwed up. I, I like I want to I want to dissect that and fix it. But if I thought it was great, I give myself a few days to let the be, to bask in the glow and then I'll go. get real about it. Yep, that's right. So, so that concept of listening back to gigs and coming up with notes again, it, it, your band has got to want them. Like, yes, you know, for a lot of pickup bands. They're like, dude, I learned my part. I played my part. You know, you stay in your own lane. That is a very likely outcome if everybody's not ready to have those conversations. Totally. But I think I told you about a, a local band here. Or actually, they're an international band now called Super Diamond. So they were one of the first tribute bands I ever heard of. They were a Neil Diamond tribute band. And they are all in costumes. Sure. They sound like them. You know, their stage show is, is you know pretty close. And I remember when I was getting the House Rockers together, I found out who their manager was and I picked up the phone and asked him like, what's it take to have a successful band in this scene? I was thinking very local. Yeah. And his, yeah. his reply was like, you know, what I think is that the difference in bands, people have varying levels of commitment to excellence, right? Oh yeah. When you get a, when you get a band of guys that all just want to, you know, they're fine to just keep striving for the perfect show. Those are bands that typically tend to separate themselves from the, from the, you know, people who are just getting together for a good time. Totally. And, you know, and that, that's not necessarily a pro thing versus a, a semi-pro thing. It's a, you know, there are plenty of semi-pro people who would want to get it right and want to keep getting it right. And there's a lot of joy. And that maybe that's the thing is you, if you have a bunch of guys with the same perspective of notes yep. or, you know, just, just the roadmap to continuing to refine the thing that you do. And, yeah, you know, there, there's a, I'd say a certain nobility in that, right? Like this is your craft. Of course you would want to get better at it every day. And it's, that's, that's the work part of this, right? Like going, listening to a three hour show, you know, finding time to do that, coming up with the list of stuff, you know, have, finding that diplomatic way to share it with your guys. So, you know, like, like 
yeah. I was your band leader and I, and I knew you don't like feedback. I'd have to find that that sensible way to say, hey, you know, would, would it be cool if I shared some things with you? I'm totally open to what your opinion is on it. And you, know, you just know, again, if it's a band leader and I hired you and you're going to play what I want or it's not going to work out, that's one dynamic. But in these in these democratic bands, um, you know, where everybody puts in and everybody has an ownership stake in, in, in whatever whatever that means. I mean, that's a that's a harder thing to do for one guy to be the note giver. Right? Yeah, it is. And I and I think, you know, there need there's a time and a place, certainly for the conversation, as I said, to challenge or discuss the note. But there's also a time and a place for the note to happen. Right. When when the director in a in a in the theater world where this sort of comes from, at least from my perspective, when the director in the theater world is delivering those notes. It is time for notes. Like, it's not like, Hey, we're hanging out. And the director says, Hey, by the way, I have yeah. something to say to you. It's part it, of the process. It's part. Yes. We're all, everybody's sitting there. The director is in front of the group. Usually, you know, I mean, it's, it's very much a sit now, shut your trap and listen to that person because they have important things to say. So like applying that to our rock bands, they're, they're, this is best going, this is going to work best when you have a time and a place set aside for this conversation. And if it's a democratic band, you know, maybe you, you start your next rehearsal or maybe it's halfway through your next rehearsal at your break or after your rehearsal break or something where, you know, you sit down and each person has five minutes to, to share their notes and all anyone does is say, thank you. Right. And then later you can discuss them all like that kind of a thing. But, but I think, yeah, you, you need to have or create a time and a place for these kinds of things to happen in order for them to be well, best received. I don't necessarily want to say well received because some of them won't be well received, but best received. Yeah. Say thank you. Just say thank you. That's it. Take the note. That's it. That's the answer is a hundred percent of the time. It's thank you. That's even if it's like you were terrible on that. Yeah. Thank you. Like that's yeah. it. Hopefully nobody says that to you. That's not the most kind thing to say, but, um, but that's the answer is thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It sucks sometimes though. It, it like it cuts deep. Some of those notes and some of them are so, you know, I, I know, and this is the beauty of saying thank you in the moment and then processing, you know, processing through what my act reaction would have been and, and what it, what it will be later is sometimes it's like, Oh, you know, that, that, that tune was too fast. Like, Tempo things I'm really sensitive about, you know, it's like when somebody tells me I played something too fast or too slow or sped up or slowed down or whatever, like that cuts really deep. And from, from the standpoint of the director giving the note, it is not a big deal. It's like, oh yeah, that was a little fast today. Just, you know, just watch that. And it's like, that's it. That's the last time they're going to think about it unless I do it again. Whereas for me, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I sped up. Like, oh, I'm I'm not worthy as a drummer. You know, like all of that stuff goes through your head. And it's like, yeah. all that person did was notice that you sped up, man. And they they just highlighted it. That's it. it they've moved on. You should too, you know, <laughs> but it's not easy. It's not easy when it's a thing that you take pride in and all of that. And that's okay. But it's, that's why you say thank you. And then think about it later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's, uh, that's it. Uh, that's what I got for today. Good, you got anything else, man? To, nah, but good to be back in the saddle. Welcome back. Thanks. And, 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 and you welcome to your new home, your new studio, yeah. my friend. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Good. We're, good. We're very happy here. That's awesome. You deserve that. The, uh, for many reasons, but, but, you know, the last couple of months you've kind of been in temporary housing as, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> so, um, glad, I'm glad that you are now home again. Um, I is. Yeah, that's good, man. All right, folks. Well, you know where to find us, gitgabpodcast.com. Uh, you can send us your email feedback at gitgabpodcast.com and we would love to hear from you. And until then we'll see you, uh, we'll see you next week. That's my plan anyway, Paul. Always be performing. Oh, that's what I'm going to try and do. Hopefully the weather holds out and I can do that Wednesday night. Go get them. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs>